On Medium Wave and FM Stereo, this is National Radio 1. Well, hello there. This is TV on the radio, Thomas Vance, the music vendor, and welcome to the Friday Rock Show. Where tonight, the records feature Journey, Keel, Judas Priest, Wasp, Genesis, Palace, Dio, ZZ Top, Joe Cocker, and others. Our second delight is by a guy who is no stranger to the show at all. He's been frequently heard as a member of Fourth Wind. Now he's got his own band. He is guitarist Hugh Lloyd Lecton. At about 10.45 tonight, from a studio in Birmingham, Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath. <laughs> the track is called Danger Zone. It's from the album Seventh Star, the album that has this billing. Black Sabbath featuring Tony Iommi. It's out on the Vertigo record label here in the United Kingdom. Uh, Tony Iommi is in a studio up there in Birmingham, and now he's joined us on the Friday Rock Show. Tony, welcome to our program. Thanks, Tommy. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. How's Birmingham this time of night, then? Bloody freezing. <laughs> is it cold out there? Yeah. Never mind. I just read in the history, you know, in about three or four different books, the history of Black Sabbath, and like most people, I suppose, one tends to forget just how big you were when you, when you started, when you broke with the album, Par with the single, rather Paranoid. And yeah. you were big also by word of mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was no great, massive, there was no crying in those days. Well, that's right, yeah, I think the... In them days, the press uh, didn't really want to know us or anything, so uh, it was all—it was all word of mouth, really. The, the, it wasn't that, the, the press actually hated you. That's right. <laughs> I'm I'll let you I, say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember people articles that were vitriolic. I mean, really, were mudslinging. They hated the everything you stand, stood for. Yeah, I had a hell of a job writing them, actually. <laughs> 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 you were even into media in those days. Huh? <laughs> Listen, um, I've got a feeling that it's been a bit of a struggle over the past couple of three years, keeping the concept of Black Sabbath together? Well, basically what it was is that uh, we lost a little bit of direction over the last few years when we were, we didn't know, we were looking for singers and God knows one thing or another. And uh, we, I think we lost way what to go, which way to, to go. Um, so we were rehearsing and trying various different things and we ended up nowhere really. Yeah. So, uh, but you've also suffered from, from illness, I mean, Ward and Butler have not been the best, uh, been in the best of, of health recently, have they? Well, I think I think Geese was all right. I think it's basically Bill was at one time was a you know recovering alcoholic. So um, I mean he seems to be okay at the moment now. Yeah. But uh, he did go through quite a big stage, you know, with that. Get ready to dance, everybody! Yeah. Rock Commander is a celebration of rock and metal culture. Manage your own rock bands, connect with a passionate community, and experience exclusive collaborations with real bands like American Chaos and Adam and the Metal Hawks. But there must have been times, Tony, when you thought, I'm going to ditch the name Black Sabbath altogether, and I'm just going to become, say, the Tony Iommi Band. Well, I suppose that could go through in mind, but, uh, you know, I've always been part of Black Sabbath all my life, and that's, that's, that's always been my life, you know. Mm. So uh, that's why I continue on with it now. Where did you get the name from in 1967, Polka Tulk? Oh, God. I, I think it was the old management we had. Yeah. The old management. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to figure out what it means. I mean, what a name for a band, Polka Tulk. <laughs> uh, I forgot. It did mean something, but I forgot now. Yeah? Mm. That was when you were uh, in... famous war or something. <laughs> <laughs> None that I've heard of in a history lesson. But then you became Earth, didn't you? That's right. Which was a bit more down-to-earth and a bit more hippie, I suppose. Well, the only snag with that is that there's another group called Earth, which was a pop group at that time, yeah. and we were getting booked as the same group, you know. So we did end up turning up at a, a one function with the bow ties and everything, and we turned up looking like ragtag and bobtail. Uh -huh. And uh, we were obviously the wrong band for this function, but we did play, and they threw us off. 
<laughs> <laughs> Straight off the stage job, was it? Well, you know, it was like you're not getting paid thing, you know. Right. Before you then became Black Sabbath and you were Earth, yeah. were, you, were you playing what was loosely called, if you like, heavy metal in those days? Though, if, if, to be absolutely honest, you originated the term in many ways. That's right. Or were you a blues band? We were basically a blues jazz band, really. We, we'd done a lot of jazz stuff, um, but it was all based around the blues idea, you know. Mm. What guitarists do you rate, or what guitarist did you rate when you first picked up the axe? Uh, Funny enough, um, I, I used to listen to the Shadows a lot. Yeah. And uh, the same enough, they're playing in town here tonight. I wanted to go and see them, but... But you're here. But I'm here. Or there, rather. I'm here. Yeah. If you can work that one out. <laughs> but, I mean, a lot of people say that, the, the Hank Marvin, right? That's um, right, yeah. That I think he's a big influence on loads of people nowadays. But he wasn't actually a about. blues player, was he? No, 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 but at that time, I think they were one of the only instrumentalists of guitar was, apart from the Ventures, which come out a bit later, I think. Yeah. But didn't you sort of immerse yourself in a back room somewhere with about three and sixpence, uh, you know, live on for the week? I didn't know much. <laughs> yeah, well, one and ninepence then, and a tin of Tom Piper steak pudding or something like that, and listen to uh, old well, Huddy Ledbetter or whoever, names that I can't even remember. <laughs> you, 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 you didn't really sort of, if you like, come from from a blues background, but you're known, or at least the history books say, you were a blues band. I think basically, though, we'd lived it here, you know, because we all lived in a pretty depressing area. Yeah. And uh, I think it came out in the music when we started rehearsing. I mean, it was very rough when we, we first started, you know. We were always in fights and God knows what else. So it's... And that was just with Ozzy, I suppose? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Through was he? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He'd start them, right? You'd have to get everybody out of them. <laughs> so it's more more rhythm and blues. Very stuff. It was more the old, you know, coloured blues players, you know, yeah. the American blues. Time for a bit of music. This is Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Classic track, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, playing it there from the 1973 album Greatest Hits by Black Sabbath, of course. Our guest on be on this uh, program is a gentleman who's up there in Pebble Mill. I'm down in dear old London town. He's the man who plays the guitar in Black Sabbath. Now the only remaining member of Black Sabbath in the band, Tony Iommi. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Well, you, now, you're over here to do a few gigs. Yeah. Where are you going to be appearing? Any idea yet? Because the, I mean, yeah. the fixed, <laughs> is, it, is it fixed? Yeah, the first one's uh, Sheffield on the 21st. 21st? Yeah, 22nd Liverpool, 24th Manchester, 25th Birmingham, 26th mm. Bristol, 27th Leicester. 28th off, 29th Edinburgh, 30th Newcastle, and then we do Hammersmith for two days, first and second, mm -hmm. and the third we do Paul, and fourth Nottingham. So it's a pretty extensive tour then. Well, it's, it's lovely around, then we go to Europe for uh, about 10 days. Yeah. Who's in the band? There's a certain amount of confusion as to who people are going to see when they go to see you. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, there's, we've got three American people with the band now. Yeah. Uh, no, we got three. Two. <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah. We got um, uh, Ray Gillen on vocals. Uh -huh. He's from New York. Uh, Dave Spitz, Dave the Beast Spitz on bass, and Eric Singer on drums, and uh, Jeff Nichols, who's been with us since 1980. Right. He's on keyboards. And me. And you. But not Glenn Hughes. No. Who is the singer on the album. That's right. Right. What happened to him? Um, I think he's retired. <laughs> again? <No. laughs> yeah, again. He um, sort of pops up on so many people's albums, though, Tony, doesn't he? He does a bit, and then they fire him. Well, that's right. I think album-wise, he's fine. Uh, but when he gets onto the road, it's, uh, it's another story, really, which yeah. we found out. <laughs> <laughs> Different sort of animal. Yeah. I was warned, though, by the various other people he's, he's been with, you know. But yeah. uh, there we go. And what sort of, a mu of music are you going to be doing? Are you going to be doing any of the old classics? Oh, yeah, we'll be doing stuff from all the various albums, um... You know, from the first, from Black Sabbath album onwards to now. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a very variation of all of them. So people won't be disappointed. They won't sort of walk away at the end of the gig going, we had to see Black Sabbath, but we didn't hear such and such. Because oh, if you no. don't play those classics, I mean, they really do. Well, it might not give you a hard time. They give me a hard time in the letters. <laughs> oh, no, we'll be playing all them. You will? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. OK, here's a bit more music. This is from Live Evil. The track is Voodoo. Black Sabbath, Voodoo, from the double album Live Evil. On the Friday Rock Show at the moment, I have Tony Iommi on the show. He's actually in the studio at Pepper Mill in Birmingham. Are we in the studio at Pepper Mill? In Pepper Mill, indeed. <laughs> Not too far from Aston. Yep. 
which used to be the home of HP Source and the original Crossroads studio. Yeah, and us. And you lot as well. Yep. First album you made took you two days, I'm told, and cost 600 quid. Yep. How much did this current one cost you? Uh, oh, Christ, you dropped me there. <laughs> oh. uh, not as much as the last one. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think... I, I, was it about 100 grand or something? 300 yeah. grand. 300 so, grand. 200,000 quid? 300 grand. Actually, Glenn, you was probably about 600,000. God! And what a difference. Yeah. Hey, what a difference. I was just, uh, what, 16 years, something like that. Unbelievable, was not it? Yep. Do you own up to having invented heavy metal? Go on, then I'll own up to it. I think it's true, though, isn't it, really? Yep. I mean, it is absolutely true. I'll let you say that, though. No, I want you to say it because <laughs> I th I, sometimes I think one of one of a, a part of your personality that's been a disservice to you is the fact that you've stood back and not come forward so much as a personality in the band. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Well, that's what I've been told. Yeah. Well, well basically, I've done that because uh, like when we brought Ronnie into the band, I mean, it was. Uh, it was a quite a hard time to take Ozzy's place, so we brought him in and, and, and more shoved into the front to try and get a lot of the attention, you know. Mm. <clears throat> so that meant we were all sitting in the background. Yeah. So uh, it was basically to you know, to establish him, really. Yeah. And then Ian Gillen for a while? Yeah. And he was right up the front? Yep. Now it's your turn to be up the front. It's my turn now. So give him some welly. Yeah. On the tour that starts on the 21st of right. this month. Thanks. Tony Iommi, you're a great guitarist, and thank you very much indeed, indeed for your time tonight. Thanks very much, Tony. And I'm going to play a track now that you've requested. Why do you want me to play it? What about it? This track from the current album do you so greatly love? Well, basically, because it was uh, we recorded it as it came out. You know, it was just it was a jam. That this track, uh, Heart Like a War, was uh, as we'd done it. It uh, was recorded. And it was originally about 25 minutes long, yeah. and uh, we liked it, so we cut the end there. Well, I look forward to hearing it on stage. I hope you do it. We will. See you the Hammersmith Odeon. Thank you. Cheers, Tom. ta -da. Wonderful guitarist, that man. Sat in audiences up to you over the years, just eyes transfixed watching him work on that guitar. He's a great guitarist, really. Well, you know that anyway. Tony Iommi, Black Sabbath. That track was called Heart Like a Wheel from the album that's out at the moment on the Vertigo record label called Black Sabbath featuring Tony Iommi. And they start their tour of the United Kingdom on the 21st of this month. Many thanks to Tony Iommi, Black Sabbath up there in Birmingham for taking a bit of time out of his busy schedule and going into Pebble Mill and having a chat. Remember, the Black Sabbath tour starts on the 21st of this month. Eileen, our petite but perfectly formed secretary, is no longer our secretary. She's still the rest. She's going to TV for six months. Thank you, Eileen. You're a doll. The Friday Rock Show is a Tony Wilson production. Following the Midnight Pips, you'll hear on FM Stereo, Radio 2. On Medium Wave, Radio 1 News. Have yourself a good weekend. Have yourself a good... See you next week. I'm Tommy Vance. On behalf of all the music people on Radio 1, God bless. Good night.